They are still stacked up down there. Gosh, oh, there's one, there we go. There are just so many, there he is. Crappie number two, this is an insane school. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we got a, we got a windy one today. And uh, out here, summertime fishing, we're gonna try for a multi-species action today. Got some brand new reels in the mail. And I don't even know if you can hear me right now. This, this wind is terrible, absolutely terrible. But got some brand new reels in the mail. We're gonna head out to a, some uh, brush piles, hopefully some crappie on them, and possibly some white bass. That's what we're targeting today. Water temps are very, very warm. Look at that, 79, oh, damn near 79 degrees right there. I honestly have no idea how great the audio is, so we're gonna tuck behind some of these bays here. Hopefully we can get on something. Hoping to find something on one of these brush piles here. Doesn't look like this. Oh, we got something. There's a few fish out there. Not what I want to see though. Maybe they're in a little bit shallower. All right, I got it on anchor lock right now, but there, there's the fish right there. I don't know. Some of these look like they're bigger fish. Oops, or too zoomed in. Sorry about that. Some of these look like they're bigger fish swimming through here. There's a bunch of bait fish right there. That anchors. Yeah, but there's fish whoops, stacked up all over the place. So hopefully we can uh, get on some white bass and some crappie vertically jigging with a spoon, something I don't don't normally do. And I got a brand new couple brand new reels in the mail. This is the uh, PC Fun Spark. I'll tell you more about that in a second here, but so there's a ton of them down there. Starting off with this peach tackle, a little jigging spoon. Gosh dang, I love having spot lock now. Little jigging spoon, eight pound mono. And this is the PC Fun Spark. Let's see if we can catch a couple of these fish. I can take back control now. Let's bump up a little bit and get on top of that brush pile. Dang, I had a hit right away. We're right in the middle of them down here. Oh gosh dang, had him. There he is, got him. And it's crappie, crappie number one. I'm gonna get this guy back right away because he kind of choked it down there, but that is crappie number one, species number one we came for today. They are still stacked up down there. They're just right below the boat. Let's see if we can catch another guy. I do have it on spot lock right now because it is uh, got some wind going on. Oh, there he was. There are just so many. There he is. Crappie number two. This is an insane school. Just a little perch. Well, it's more of a fire tiger pattern. Golden fire tiger pattern. Jig and spoon. They're not big, but these are definitely nice eaters. Probably about, what is this guy? He's a nine inch fish. Solid eater, nothing monstrous, but we'll take them. Now I was watching uh, some Instagram videos on this new reel and uh, Chief Crappie Raider, shout out to you bud. He was using this to cast some uh, smaller crankbaits for crappie with this thing. It's definitely a lighter action reel. This is an eight to one 0.1 gear ratio, so it's super fast, but for your uh, crappie guys that love to vertically jig with bait casters, super, th super thin profile bait. I actually have it on a bait casting rod, but I know a lot of guys, there's one. They're just freaking hammering this thing. <laughs> They're just hammering this, this little spoon here. One after another, I just pulled up on them. 
But I know a lot of guys like to vertically jig with bait casters and that low profile is super important. It's another nine inch eater. If I was keeping them, I'd be throwing them in the live well, but I'm not. Look at them all just stacked up on this brush pile. Low profile and lightweight. I know a lot of guys, that's, that's what they ask out of those bait casters when they vertically jig for them. Crappie and like, especially if you're dipping trees. Truman's probably the most famous one for dipping trees. I've only fished it once and I hope to go back there and I will be bringing this, this reel and the other one I'm gonna show you. I'm not even doing anything. I'm just sitting here and they're hammering this. Gosh, oh, there's one, there we go. They're all cookie cutter, nine inch eaters. Still a ton of fun to catch them though. Now spoons are something I really, I, I see a lot of guys fish for white bass, obviously. Um, if you guys watch any of those Texas boys, they're vertically jigging for white bass all the time. But spoons, I don't normally use them for open water for crappie. Ice fishing though, they're amazing. But clearly open water, they, uh, they can do some damage. Kind of just wish the crappie were bigger on this lake. Still fun to catch though. First drop, let's see if I can get them. This spoon's actually kind of curved, so it flutters, flutters down. It's not like a straight drop. Dude, that's a bluegill. Well, multi-species day. Not the second species we want. We're, we're gonna try to target some white bass here. I think I know where they're at, but we'll see in a second. But this spoon's got that bend to it, so it kind of flutters its way down. It's not a straight. Some of these spoons, more rattle spoons, they're built more like a straight body and they shoot straight down. This one kind of flutters on the way down, which is nice because that little hesitation gives those crappies some time to come up and hit it, and that's exactly what they're doing. And that bluegill, apparently. I just rip it up the water column a little bit, and they hit it right as it starts fluttering back down. <laughs> this is an insane bite going on right now. One after another, my goodness. Don't lose any minnows. It's not pulling your jig off. Super smooth reel too. Just gonna rip it up the water column about a foot, let it sit. Oh, there was a tap. There's another tap. Drop it back down a little bit. There's one. <laughs> this is an insane bite. They're not giants, but these are respectable eaters, for, especially for this lake. Those nine to 10 inch fish, very respectable eating fish. That is awesome, awesome. Let's get back down there. See if I can get one here on the, on the live scope. There are just so many down there right now. Oh crap, you guys aren't even watching the live scope. Sorry about that. There he is. Got to adjust my live scope camera. See so, yeah. ya. Once this live scope settles in. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get one on live scope. Well, came up and smoked it. Didn't even get my live scope. Ooh. Two minute penalty. I think that's a bigger fish, but it's underneath the boat. See if I can pull them out. Oh. They shut off on me? Come on. There's one. There's one. Very typical summertime pattern right now. Deeper structure, deeper pieces of cover. There's brush piles in 17 feet of water. And I'm straight out from a spawning bay. 
So how, how you go about finding some of these fish or a lot of these fish, if you start where you're catching them during the spawn, which is these flatter spawning bays, these spawning flats, um, and then find the deepest drop off or the closest deepest drop off. And if you can find some piece of some piece of cover, a lay down or a brush pile like this, that's usually where a lot of times these crop will stack up mid summer, it's mid July right now. For Wisconsin, this is pretty typical uh, water temps, mid summer, upper 70s, low 80s. We probably won't get into the mid 80s at all, um, except maybe on a streak, but it doesn't stay there very long, so. Come on, somebody. Oh, wow, we had it. Negative bite. Negative bite, didn't even feel him, all right. Well, I can't find any white bass, we'll come back to this spot. Okay. See you, bud. I'm right in the middle. There's one. flopping all over the boat. That flutter spoon is just barely floating down there. It's not a hard drop. All I gotta do is pump it a little bit, about a foot in the water column. And it just flutters right back down. And they just hammer it. Gotta get over them though. Yep, right there. Oh my goodness, fish. You get out of here. There's a ton of them down there. Holy smokes. There he is. Got him. If only these were a bunch of two pounders, that would be real fun. That's okay. It's still fun to catch them. Especially when they're one after another like this. See you, bud. There he is. Thumped at that time. Ow! Right in the hand. All right, let's get one more on, on the spoon. We'll call it a night. All right, that's gonna end it for the night. Man, this spoon was way more effective than I thought it was gonna be today. I thought I was gonna have to go to a jig or something, but literally every time I drop it down there, these things just smoke it, absolutely smoke it. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up. Simple, simple jig spoon. Normally used for ice fishing up north. Um, a lot of guys use it for white bass, pretty much all over North America, but it is very deadly as you saw today for crappie. This is the PC Fun Spark Reel 8.1, super, super low profile, smaller reel. Uh, crappie fishing guys, a lot of the vertically jigging guys, if you dip trees a lot, um, specifically in the southern states, if you do a lot of dipping, awesome reel. Also, trolling crankbaits, and I might even throw this on just a regular jig rod, like a 10 or 11 footer. I'm thinking about throwing it on that. So another reel I didn't get to, this is the Spark Pro. This is the Spark, awesome reels, low, super low profile, smaller size bait casting reels, but they're both 8.1 to one ratio, so they're super fast too. Um, so if you are fishing in deeper water, I was fishing in 17 feet. I really didn't have to uh, drop that spoon that far down, but if you had to fish in that 17, 20, 25 feet, super quick to get that jig or that uh, spoon up the water column real fast. I will be using this one for some smallmouth action this weekend doing some river smallmouth fishing. Huge thanks to Pete's Tackle for sending me that spoon. I'll link that below. I'll also link the two reels below. Summertime crappie fishing. Brush piles, if you have them. If you don't have brush piles, I was actually finding some of them on the edges of weeds in that 15 to 20 feet. This lake is fairly clear. It's a little bit stained, but for the most part, it's fairly clear. So those weeds will actually grow up to that 15, 17 feet mark. And then some of them, sometimes they'll actually grow right to the surface. Here they grow probably five feet below the surface. That's how tall they get. Um, but on our lakes up north where there's super clear water, if you don't have brush pilers, or you don't have timber or anything like that, uh, those edges of weeds, that's where these crappie are gonna be hanging out this summer. Try out the spoon, 
just pitch it up against the weed bed, kind of pull it through there. Um, if you have a live scope and if you're lucky enough to have the live scope system on some brush piles, that spoon clearly, as you saw today, very, very deadly. Again, huge thank you to Peach Tackle and to PC Fun for sending me the, re the reels. I will link them below. If you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you.